Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck. So, today I have a dish for you that I am so pleased to present because if you love my sausage and shells recipe, oh boy, do I have a treat for you. For those of you who love my sausage and shells recipe, you can raise your hand. I can see you. I can really. You look great in that outfit. You look great. Don't change a thing. And if you also like things that are spicy with a little bit of a kick in there, oh boy. Have I played matchmaker Yenta for you? I have a pasta coming your way that is going to make you so happy. You're gonna sing to the skies and then rub your thighs. I don't know. And then rub your eyes because you're gonna be looking at what you made and you're gonna say, oh my gosh. And then when you try it, forget it. You're not gonna be responsible for what you're gonna say because you're just gonna start spewing words of happiness and who cares? Just say them. Who cares? It's that good, I promise. Guys, we're making something called spicy sausage pasta today and it's going to be something that is truly one of my favorite things I've ever made and I guarantee you that if you like sausage and you like pasta and you like some spiciness this is the one for you but don't worry I've also adapted it so if you hate spice you're gonna love it just as much so guys like pretty much all my recipes this is laughably easy and guys because my birthday is coming up I wanted to really make sure that when I release this around my birthday it was gonna be a dish I really really wanted to try and spoil myself to and I have to say I couldn't be prouder to ring it another year eating a pile of this stuff here we go guys right to the instant pot some unbelievable spicy sausage pasta so I'm gonna start with one really large or two regular size shallots. This one is huge, by the way. See how big it is? Look at that, it's like as big as my hand. And look at that, the skin is peeling right off. What I wanna do with that is I wanna dice it up. See? All right, set this aside. Now because we're making a spicy sausage pasta, what I wanna do is I wanna use some hot Italian sausage. I'm gonna use a pound of that, but because I want a little bit of mild sausage in there as well, I'm also gonna take a pound of sweet Italian sausage. I'm gonna add a pound of each. Each of these little packets have about six links, and there's a pound of sausage in each of these packages, but it's totally up to you. If you don't want this spicy, just simply add only sweet sausage. If you want it extra spicy, just add hot Italian sausage. But me, I like to mingle. I like to mix things up. So I'll show you how we prepare the sausage. So I wanna take each sausage and I want to take the meat out of the casing. And even though I have magical snapping powers, I'm going to show you how easy it is to remove the sausage meat from the casing. Simply take a good sharp knife and take the very tip of the knife and then just serrate the skin or the casing of the sausage and it's going to simply just open up very easily and you can peel it back and look at this guys, the meat just peels right out of the casing. Look at that! And now we'll just put our meat inside of a bowl and then just leave it there and repeat the process for all of our sausage. There we go, all of our sausage removed from its casing. And of course, if you can find ground sausage in your supermarket that's hot or sweet or whatever you prefer, you can use that instead. But honestly, taking it out of the casing is no time at all and it's actually kind of fun to do. So just put all of the sausage meat in a bowl and now let's go to our Instant Pot. And in my Instant Pot, I'm gonna add a half a stick or four tablespoons of salted butter. So let's come down to our control panel and hit the saute button and make sure we're on the more or the high setting. And feel free to just stir the butter around in the pot a little bit so it gets evenly distributed amongst the entire bottom of the pot. And now that our butter is melted and sizzling, it's time to add in our shallots. And stir that around in the pot so they're nice and coated with the butter. And we're gonna let that cook in there for about two minutes. And then after a couple of minutes of the shallots cooking inside of the butter, they'll have browned ever so slightly. And we now want to add in about one tablespoon of like a sliced garlic if you can get it. If not, you can use crushed German garlic too. And now stir that around in the pot for about another minute. And it really is amazing just how much flavor some sautéed shallots and garlic and butter, of course, releases into an amazing dish, really any dish at all. All right, and now that our shallots have even more brown in color and our garlic has gotten some pretty color, it is time to add our delicious sausage meat that we've uncased. Now put that right into the pot. And now simply take a spatula and just mix it inside of the pot with all of the butter and the shallots and the garlic. And you're gonna see that the sausage meat itself is going to just become crumbled and ground up. So just keep doing this for a bit. Let it break up. Make sure everything gets nice and slightly heated. We're not going to fully cook our sausage right now. That'll happen when we pressure cook. But we wanna get it nice and kind of crumbly. And we're gonna just mix it around in the pot with a spatula or a wooden mixing spoon for about two minutes or so, that'll do the trick. Make sure it gets nice and broken up, just like you see happening here in my pot. So it's basically gonna become like crumbled sausage meat. Okay, and after about two minutes of cooking our sausage in the pot and crumbling it up and just basically mashing it into oblivion, we're now gonna add in some of our sauce. 
I'm gonna add in three cups of a marinara sauce. I like Victoria White Linen marinara sauce brand, or you can use any kind that you love, but this stuff is really, really good, guys. It's like practically like the real deal, homemade. And then just mix that up with our sausage a little bit, so it's nice and entwined in there. And now we need to add some liquid to this pot to thin out that sauce a little bit and it's gonna be amazing flavor. That's two teaspoons of a garlic base mixed with two cups of water and that equals two cups of garlic broth. Or you can use two cups of chicken broth or you can just use two cups of water. It really doesn't even make a difference. I like the garlic broth because it'll give it even more flavor. Now because we're making a spicy sauce here, I'm adding a half a cup of a hot sauce. Any kind that you love, your favorite kind of hot sauce. And you can use less, you can use like a quarter of a cup instead or a third of a cup, but I'm using a half a cup. It's totally up to you. I think this will make it a perfect heat level. Or if you're not into spicy, again, you can only use sweet sausage if you want and don't even add the hot sauce. I'm gonna put that into the pot and then just give everything a nice good stir for now, okay? Make sure the sausage is mixed up with all the stuff we have in the pot. I'm also gonna add in a teaspoon of a dried sweet basil, a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and again, because we're making a spicy pasta here, I'm adding a half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. This stuff goes a long way, guys. A little bit really does. But you can add more if you want, or you could add less if you want, or you could add none if you want. Again, if you don't want this spicy, you can totally omit the hot sausage and just use sweet Italian sausage. You can totally also omit the hot sauce and the crushed red pepper flakes. Totally up to you, but because I'm making like a Fra Diablo type of like marinara cream sauce, we'll get to the cream part in a bit, that's what I'm adding in. So I'm gonna give all this a good stir right now. Make sure everything is nice and blended together. And now it is time to add in our pasta. I am using a campanelle, campanelli, whatever you wanna call it type of pasta for this because I love its shape and think it's perfect for this. But you can really use a rotini if you want instead or a farfalle, like the little bow ties, or a gemelli, anything of that nature too will work totally fine. But this is the stuff I really wanna use for it. And I'm gonna add an entire one pound box. And I'm just gonna simply make sure all of my pasta is kind of underneath the liquid in the pot. It's okay if some of it's iceberging, but just kind of smooth it out so it's somewhat submerged underneath the liquid. Just like this is absolutely perfect. All right, one final ingredient to add to this before we pressure cook. And that's gonna be about five to eight ounces of baby spinach. Now, it's gonna feel like you're totally packing this thing to the brim, which you are, but don't worry. Baby spinach cooks down into absolutely nothing. It wilts away, and it's gonna be fabulous inside of the sauce once it's mixed in. Okay, there we have it, all of our baby spinach. It's now time to secure our lid and pressure cook. Let's get the lid on, make sure it's in sealing position. So now let's come back to our pot and hit the cancel button. And now we wanna hit the pressure cook or the manual button, depending on your model. And we wanna go for six minutes on high pressure. That's it, just six minutes. So while the pasta is undergoing some delicious metamorphosis in the Instant Pot, let's focus on a bunch of scallions and then slice them up into about a half an inch to an inch long pieces. You want nice long slices of scallion for this. And also, because I love the bottom crunchier part of the scallions inside of this pasta, it actually becomes like a mushy crunchy, it's amazing. I'm actually gonna add in another portion of scallions, but just the bottom crunchy portion and add that to my mix. Of course, don't forget to cut off the paintbrushes at the end of each of those scallions. You don't want them to you know, go inside the pot. You know, you really don't wanna eat those. They might tickle your throat a bit. And then we'll just set those aside for the very end when we stir them into our pasta. I also want to take four ounces out of an eight ounce brick of cream cheese, that would be half a brick. Cut into cubes like this, it's going to be easy for dispersing when we mix it in with our finished pasta and creating that amazing sauce. Followed by a 5.2 ounce package of some borsin. I'm using the garlic and fine herb flavor, which I love, but they also have multiple other flavors like a shallot and chive, a basil and chive, and what might be really good for this, guys, like a red pepper one as well, that's spicy. Go for whatever kind you want. Now, if you can't find borsin in your market, which it normally is in like the fancy cheese slash charcuterie meat section, like in the deli area, it's not typically in the same area where you're find like craft singles or shredded mozzarella anything like that you'll find this typically in the deli section and if you can't find it or you don't really feel like using it you can just use that entire brick of cream cheese all eight ounces instead of just four of them which I've cut into crumbles as well and I've added it to my cream cheese and now we'll just set that aside time's up so we're ready to do a quick release and the pin just dropped so we take the lid off and I told you our spinach wilts into nothing and now let's give everything in the pot a good stir, and I mean a good stir. So get everything nice and combined together and blended well. Oh, this is gonna be delicious. Get that spinach all mixed up with our pasta, which is cooked perfectly, excellent. And now I have a few more steps. I wanna now add in one more cup of the marinara sauce. It should be at room temperature when we add it in, it shouldn't be cold. 
And the reason why I saved this for later is for two reasons. One, because I didn't want to risk our pasta sticking and having a burn issue in the pot when it cooked. And two, because it's going to be more substantial now when we add it at the very end. And because it's room temperature, it's going to heat up very, very quickly. So all in all, we want to use four cups of marinara divided, three cups before we cook, and one for after. And just mix that in nice and good. Now I also want to add in all of my scallions and stir them up so they're nice and combined with everything in the pot too. The scallions will cook from the heat relatively quickly, and when I say cook, I mean they don't need to even be cooked. But they're not gonna taste raw, is what I'm trying to say after a few moments of stirring. Okay, and after about a minute or so of that, we have to now add in our dairy. That's right, guys, I'm talking our amazing combination of borson and cream cheese. And let's stir that in and make sure they get nice and melded into the pot. We want all of that borson and cream cheese nice and melded with our sauce, which will happen relatively quickly because of the heat that's inside of the pot right now. And just stir it for about two minutes or so, and you're gonna see that everything is gonna be combined perfectly and melded in the pot. And then after a few moments of stirring and blending all of our borson and cream cheese into the pot, you're gonna see we're gonna have the most incredible, decadent, spicy, creamy sausage pasta ever. And, and all right guys, we are looking absolutely superb. Look at this, it is time to serve it up. Oh boy. All right, I'm gonna put some in a little bowl here for myself. Well, it's not such a little bowl. Let's make sure we get plenty of sausage and pasta in there as well as spinach and scallions, of course. And let's just take a quick look at this, guys, before I put it in my belly. <laughs> amazing, delicious pasta. I love the campanella for this. Uh, and an amazing, rich sauce, just full of sausage and greens. All right, so this is going into my mouth right now. Open wide. And here we go, just look at this. All right, let's try it out. Cherry, 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 bar, bar, bar. We've hit the jackpot, folks. Oh my gosh, <laughs> oh, oh my. And look at this, a quadruple S. Sausage, shallots, scallions, spinach, the sibilant S. Oh. Now, if you like a spicy marinara arrabbiata slash fra diablo sauce, and if you like my sausage and shells recipe, guys, I just made a match. Again, to the matchmaker would be so proud of me. Spicy sausage pasta is the new trend. Mm. And I'm just saying that because I'm setting the trend right now. I insist on it. Unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. The flavors are everything. It is not overbearing in terms of spice. It really truly is not. So if you want it spicier, add more crushed red pepper flakes, like another half a teaspoon or to your heart's content. Or even add a little more hot sauce if you wish. That's totally up to you. Or you can just use hot sauces instead of not adding any sweet. But guys, the spice level to me is perfection. And look at this pasta, how it's retaining its natural shape when we cook it. Mmm. Mmm. I also love the texture of this pasta, the campanelli, so much. Mm. It's almost like a folded lasagna noodle into like, like a half moon shape. It's just delicious. But again, you can really use any kind of pasta that makes you happy. You can use a farfalle, which is like the little bow ties, jamelli, which is like little twisty braids, or a rotini even, which you know looks like a coil, or even a cavatappi, which looks like little pigtails. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm such a slob right now, but I don't care. I don't care. And when we eat things that we love, who cares? You know, put on some stretchy pants if you want. You know how food can just make you happy? This dish makes me feel just as happy as I am when I'm watching a Barbra Streisand film. And that speaks volumes. Mm, I'll tell you something, Papa can hear me when I'm eating this. This is a Grand Slam recipe right here, spicy sausage pasta. Hey guys, if you enjoy these videos and if you want tons more like them, each and every one with a video, and you can pin any recipe you want to any Pinterest board, just hover over that top photo on the page and pin it. Pin away, pin the tail on the sausage. Go to PressureLoveCooking.com and enjoy. Just peruse, find something you love. There's so many recipes with more coming each week. It just keeps growing and growing and growing. It's like a Chia Pet. Go to Facebook.com slash PressureLoveCooking and like that page for any new tips, any new recipes that drop, some humor, some you know sales on deals or products that come out check that out and of course at pressure love to subscribe to me on YouTube Pinterest which is very very important right now go to Pinterest and definitely definitely like my board and share my pins uh, Instagram and Twitter guys thank you so much again and it's time to get a little spicy with the most unbelievable spicy sausage pasta you've ever had in your entire life it might even be the first time you've tried such a pasta but I'm telling you now if you like this stuff it's gonna be in the rotation forever and you're gonna blow the roof off the house to anyone you serve this to because I'm telling you they're gonna worship you saying you are the most amazing cook ever for cooking such a delicious spicy pasta dish it is that good enjoy oh my god